Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I have special guest Ricky here to talk to you guys about real estate. What's going on guys, so it's Ricky and today I'm going to be asking some questions for you guys and making sure that if you've ever wanted to get started as a real estate agent, either part-time or full-time, based off of his experience, uh, what are the best recommendations that he might have for you and very simple ways on how to get started even doing it part-time. So I really hope that you guys enjoy it and be sure to drop a thumbs up if you guys learned something new. All right, so one of the first questions that I would like to ask you is when it comes down to getting started with a real estate license, can you actually do that part-time? The answer is yes. Can you be more successful being full-time? Definitely. Okay. But yes, you can do it part-time. So in your experience, when it comes down to part-time real estate agents, of course, I think that you know the idea of be being able to do anything part-time um, is definitely possible. But in your experience and the people that you have overseen, right, because you have agents under you, right. um, what is, you think, uh, the biggest drawback when it comes down to being part-time that you experience or see most often? I would say the biggest thing is is not being available for your clients, right? People want to see houses and they might be off that day or whatever. And if you're working or you're doing it part time, you might not be available. With technology today and the amount of real estate agents, there's 87,000 agents in Arizona. And that's just Arizona alone. Yeah. They're going to call somebody else, right? All they got to do is just go to the next person. They're going to find somebody else. And everybody knows a real estate agent, Definitely. right? Everybody knows probably multiple. So if you're not have that time committed to them to be able to say, hey, yeah, no problem. I can take you over to see one, two, three, four Main Street in an hour or two or whatever. But then they're just going to move on to somebody else. Almost yeah. to be of service for them, right? Yeah. If you built a relationship with them and they're a family or something, that's a different story. And that's what I see. The first one or two years, if you're even if you're a full time realtor, but you're just not really advertising and pushing, that's what it is. It's your family and really close friends. That's all you can sell to because they're willing to give you that time of day to get started. Definitely. But that's it. You're going to sell two to three transactions and then you're done. So what would you say for someone that has wanting to get started? I know I've talked to Nick a couple of times and he's wanted to pursue the idea of getting his real estate license. I, I, I get messages all the time um, after we do videos together of people being inspired, wanting to get into real estate, might not having the money to get started investing, but right. they want to start learning more about the market. Uh, what would you say uh, and why would you want to encourage someone to go full-time? What would you say is one of the biggest benefits and how if you were to do it all over again right. that you would start? Well, I think it's not a bad idea to start part-time then go to full-time because once you start full-time or anytime once you start at all the biggest thing is getting that sphere of influence like we just said you're gonna sell to your family and friends close friends and that's it but if you can expand your sphere of influence by creating a database to be able to capture all those people and have all that information, you're going to have that clientele that you can kind of advertise to and talk about market changes and different things like that, that are going to get those people that will want to buy a house with you because they can see that you're successful and you're doing real estate. You can do that part time for whatever it takes, three months, six months, yeah. a year, whatever it is, get your foot wet in that side and then go full time. But once you really want to start ramping up, you definitely have to go full time to be able to be there, start advertising, and definitely have that kind of bigger sphere of influence that you can talk to and you can relate to. And, and it can be through social media, it can be through actually like snail mail, it can be through just a phone call or a text or mm -hmm. anything, just letting people know all the time that you're in front of them that you do real estate is going to help you get business. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I do want to say is someone that I think on the social aspect or social media aspect. Um, and it's someone that we know. He's not huge on social media, uh, but his name is Sergio, and he's a guy that's been part of like our, our group, One Home Profit, and sure. he came to visit us. And the really cool thing that we've seen him do online is not that he's not that it's not even that he's like an amazing or the most popular real estate agent, right? Uh, but he is really good on social media, just reminding you that like he does real estate, right? right. Uh, just like when it comes down to me, right? I post every day that I trade in. Just like when it comes down to you, you post every day that you do house flips. So when someone thinks about either buying or selling a house, I do agree with you that it's almost, you know, the first couple of people that you think about of like, well, who do I want to represent me? Because we all know, like you said, if you're even in any way remotely connected to people, uh, you will know a series of real estate agents. And I do agree with you that accessibility and overall accountability and making sure that they're knowledgeable and what it is that they are presenting to you or trying to sell to you is something that has to be um, you know, at the top of the list. Um, when it comes down to what is one recommendation to, because you're saying that when you're just getting started, 
Uh, you're simply staying within your sphere of influence, right? right? What is one tip that you would have for someone, if you can think of just one, yep. that can get someone out of that little bubble? Because I do agree. Yep. You know, if you're someone that's just getting started, you're motivated, you're wanting to learn more, you're wanting to represent more people, you're available, but all right now, that all the only people that will trust you are your close friends and your family. Yep. How do you pass that like resistance or that barrier? I would say one of the biggest things that I hear from uh, lots of uh, big agents that I uh, work with, um, that we do mastermind groups and everything, the number one thing is as you become an agent is being available, answering your phone. That is the biggest thing. If you're available and you can answer those questions for people, whether it's your family, your friends, whoever it is, as you have that, they're going to be your, your biggest people for you, right? They're yeah. gonna help you the most to say, hey, here's my brother, my uncle, my aunt, my cousin, whatever it is, they're a realtor, here's what it is, and then being able to be available immediately for them. And if you find out that they give your information out, that you can follow up with them right away and Definitely. say, hey, I am available, what are you guys looking for? Three bedroom, two bath, whatever it is. And then sending them a house. I think it's very, very important because as a realtor, you wanna be the one that's kind of proactive, right? And Taking saying, action, hey, yeah. yeah, you are looking for this, here's one that you might like. It may not even be what they're looking for at all, it has to be somewhat close, right? If they're looking for a three bedroom, two bath for 250,000, you can't send them a $10 million house with 14 <laughs> bedrooms, right? You can't do that. But as long as it's relatively close, you can do that. And then all of a sudden now you're going, that person's going, wow, this, this agent's really working for me because they're, they're listening to what I said. They're sending me houses proactively. And all you have to do, and I tell my agents that work for me the same thing. Once they even have a client, if they continue to do that, that helps them so much to say, hey, look, they're really looking out for me and that will motivate uh, the business and move the business forward much faster than really anything. And then of course, being available. Those like are the that. two big, big things that you've got to do. So it's, it's not so much about trying to scale at such a rapid pace, but it's yeah. understanding that even with your, you know, being in your inner circle of the people like as any like relatives or family members and or close friends, that even with them, that you treat them as serious and uh, you hold yourself accountable to try to be the best agent that you can be. So slowly but surely, kind of like a snowball effect, they can begin to spread the word of the right. positive uh, you know, experience that they might have had with you, regardless if they buy a house or not, that then that can build your client list, right? Yep. And then from there moving forward, then you can have kind of like this pool of people that continue to refer you. And then from right. there, um, I mean, it just, just keeps it expanding, just keeps yeah, yeah, because you're, and if you can provide information, even if you don't have, they're not actively looking, if you can provide information of, hey, here's the market, or even a house, like a lot of people will do, like, here's a house of the day, right? Yeah. They'll just randomly pick a house that's, you know, for sale right now and just kind of highlight it. You have to get authorization from that agent that has the house listed, but you can absolutely do that and say, hey, I want to highlight your house on social media or whatever. They can do it and it helps them, uh, get people to kind of pay attention like oh lots of people right they get magazines of houses just to look through right yeah people love looking at houses love going on Zillow love realtor.com just looking at houses so if House you can be yeah. that one that's kind of putting those pictures and or just whatever it is in front of their face all the time that really really helps to uh, solidify you as a real estate agent like you said you want them to think of you every time they think of a real estate agent that's who they want to think of they want to think of you I like that, and I think um, this is something that is universal for every market out there. But I think that a great way that we can close this video out is by going, you know, from a nine to five background as I've had myself yep. to being um, like you own, you know, your own boss and being a real estate agent. You are, in a sense, an independent contractor. So you are your right. own boss. Absolutely. And I think one of the biggest disconnects that a lot of people make is that when you have a job, there's a task list or a series of responsibilities that you must uphold, yep. and you are overseen by your manager, right? So therefore, if you don't do it, you are then um, reprimanded or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but when it comes down to being your own boss, I think the biggest disconnect is that there is no one else to hold you accountable other than yourself. So regardless if you're part-time or full-time, uh, this is a question that you have to ask yourself and it's the overall idea of like, how bad do you want it? And if you actually want to pursue this and build it to an actual sustainable career or profession, you need to hold yourself accountable. You need to have a set work, uh, set working systems and processes that actually allow you to do it in an effective and efficient way that someone wants to continue to work with you and do business with you. And I think that's the biggest mistake that people make is that they think that you know, someone's just gonna message them right. and, and want to, hey, can you help me sell my house? Hey, can you help me uh, buy a house? And it just, it doesn't work like that. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think one of the big things for 
people that are getting started is to create exactly that. Look, I get up in the morning, every morning, and I'm gonna work out from seven to eight a.m. From you know nine to 11, I'm gonna call people, you know, whatever it is, my sphere, whoever it is, I'm gonna call. From you know 11 to 12, I'm gonna do X, you know, whatever, whatever it might be, whether it's marketing, whether it's going to the coffee shop, whether it's meeting people, doesn't matter, but if you kind of have that set thing every day, like you said, you're keeping yourself accountable, mm -hmm. you're gonna be much more successful for sure. And whether that's part-time or full-time, it doesn't yeah. matter. You can do it after 5 p.m. to say, okay, I get off work, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna eat dinner, then I'm gonna make some phone calls and text and emails and whatever, and then I'm gonna look up some houses and post some stuff, or whatever it might be. As long as you have that accountability to yourself, then you're gonna be much more successful. I like that, so holding yourself accountable. So uh, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but Lenny has this amazing new Facebook group that he just started, and it's really small. It's just a way that he can connect with other like-minded and aspiring real estate agents and investors. If you guys wanna stay connected, I believe that's gonna be the first link down below. Yes. Yep. Yep. So first link down below, it's a free Facebook group, and it's called A to Z Flip. So again, it's gonna be his effort in being able to work with you guys on a closer basis, and getting you guys one step closer to your overall goals. Really do appreciate you guys' time. Yeah. Thank you guys so much and uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We'll have more content as well. Take it easy.